This is the first of our new Jumpstart Your Wealth series to help first-time home buyers and investors jumpstart their real estate experience. And the first topic we'd like to address is getting out of debt. We had an amazing husband and wife team on the show last year to talk about their efforts to eliminate debt and get into real estate. So we're posting that interview as the first Jumpstart episode. You're listening to The Real Wealth Show with Kathy Fetke the Real Estate Investors Resource. Meet Ali and Josh Lupo, better known as the FI couple. The FI stands for Financial Independence, which they have now obtained. But in this interview, you'll hear what they were up against and how they restructured their financial world to fix that problem and gain financial independence. If you listened to it before, it's worth listening to again. It's really that good. Ali and Josh talk about their humble beginnings as college students, pursuing degrees in social service, and a wedding that provided a big wake-up call about their finances. It was pretty bad. They had a whole lot of debt and knew they had to do something about it. You'll get all the details in this interview, along with another important part of their strategy to make sure they have a shared vision and goals. You may have seen them on social media. They love to share their experiences on Instagram as the Phi couple and have amassed a pretty huge following. Once you're enchanted with them in this interview, you can find out more at their website, thephicouple.com or at the Phi couple on Instagram. My hubby and partner, Rich Fedke, is co-host in this episode. He's a longtime coach who loves to help people realize their dreams and live their best lives. He's recently published a book called The Wise Investor that also offers lessons about money management and financial freedom. You can check that out on Amazon. And he and I are also coming out with our new book together. We haven't announced the details yet, but that book is called Scaling Smart, and you'll be able to find that on Amazon soon too. So, Ali and Josh, welcome to the Real Wealth Show. Thank you so much. We're so excited to be here today. Yeah, we're big fans of the both of you, so it's an honor to be here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, likewise. So, what is what is the Phi Couple mean? Great question. So, the Phi Couple stands for financial independence. And when we started the Phi Couple in 2020, we were anything but financially independent, but we were on the journey towards it. Um, and that's kind of the message and meaning behind everything that we do. Yeah. So, for us, financial independence was something that we believed we could achieve. Um, we started the journey a little over six years ago. And then um, we kind of got like halfway five, if you will, um, in 2020, and the world shut down. Um, and one day, Allie woke up and said, you know what, I think our story is kind of interesting. Maybe people could learn from us. I thought it was a terrible idea because our background isn't social media. Um, but we started just sharing real estate and personal finance tips online. Um, and then suddenly, a lot of people were interested. Awesome. So you're kind of sharing what you were learning and into and studying. And then you're like, oh, we can also share the same, share our journey, basically, huh? Well, when we first started, we had no one in our real life that was interested in personal finance or real estate. And it can feel really lonely and isolating and kind of like you're an alien to some extent. And it was kind of to the point where it was like when we were listening to the books and no. When we were reading the books and listening to the podcasts, we were hearing all of these incredible stories, but I didn't necessarily hear our stories. We we were six figures in debt and we were social workers and we were pretty financially illiterate when we first started. Um, and it was really a grind and a hustle. And the stories where we were hearing of were a very highly accomplished people, which is incredible. But I said, I want to hear from people that are kind of still in that grind and figuring it out. So we decided to create a brand and business about that. And since that point, we've accomplished so much and it's been really exciting. Awesome. I want to hear about what you've accomplished. And I'm very curious about how has uh, your background in social work helped you on this journey of financial freedom? Yeah. So um, I think often, whether it's in real estate or personal finance, people want to focus so much on the real estate and the personal finance, when in reality, 80% of it is mindset and behavioral psychology. And so I think that's kind of given us a bit of a kind of a leg up. Are you like a unique skill set that we've been able to bring to everything that we do, right? So 
we always say think relational, not transactional. So when we are going into real estate negotiations or trying to find properties, the goal isn't really to buy the property as much as it is to better understand the person that we're working with and maybe your unique problem that they have that either we can directly help solve or sometimes we can help direct them to someone who has a solution, right? So we're problem solvers by nature. That's our career. That's our background. And so all of that has actually turned out to be really applicable when it comes to helping people better understand real estate um, and then especially the world of personal finance. I love that because I don't know if you guys are familiar but uh, with, with our story, but Kathy and I met in a personal development workshop and we both became certified coaches back in 1996. So yeah, it carries over a very similar mindset and focus and more than just money. Yeah. Well, we worked on our personal development, but one thing I really hadn't developed, like you said, is this financial awareness. And I still had a scarcity mindset, you know, when we first met, didn't think or didn't know how, I didn't even know what passive income was. So I totally relate to you guys on, um, sharing your journey uh, you're in the journey because that's how i started i was uh, just so fascinated by uh by the things i was learning so what helped you shift or would you say that you did shift your mindset around uh financial awareness during this process or were you already financially open-minded Mm. No, we uh, we met in college. We did what you're supposed to do. And I'm using air quotes for folks that are listening, right? Like we went to state school, we got the college degree, we started our careers making $12 an hour. And with both of our bachelors, we had about like $65,000 in debt. And then a few years later, I said, I want to advance my career, let me get a master's. Um, and then we're at about 102,000. And then you know, our relationship progresses, we get engaged, we're planning a wedding. How do you pay for a wedding? Let's look at our financial situation for the first time in our lives. Wow, it's not good. Not only do we not have money, we have negative money. (laughs) And it was, I think it was the act of having to plan for a wedding, right, that precipitated really for the first time in our relationship. And I think at that point, we'd been together for almost five years or six years, but we never talked about money. It wasn't something that was normalized for us growing up. Um, And so that's kind of when we started growing really aware of the financial situation we were in. And so then we kind of started zooming out a little bit of, well, we're planning to get married and maybe one day we want to have a family. We're both working a ton right now. We never see each other. Um, If we don't do something different, how does life look any different a year from now, five years from now, et cetera? Um, And so that's kind of what thrusts us down the rabbit hole, if you will, of the world of personal finance. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's really interesting because uh, I don't know, I could be wrong. It could be every generation, but it does seem like your generation in that situation would feel angry and blaming. Um, Could be, you know, (laughs) like point fingers, but. Those are the comments I'll often see when I look at the comments is, well, you know, you must, you know, it must be nice. Did you experience that at all in yourselves or with people around you? Yeah. A few things that come to mind. So like Josh was definitely the catalyst with all of this. Like he was the one that was like, our financial situation is really bad. We need to make a change, like keep you up at night anxiety. And I was like, calm down. Like what you're talking about is crazy. Everyone has debt. I'm going to get my nice state job and work it for 30 years. And if it takes me 30 years to pay off my debt, I don't really care. I was so like head in the sand. It doesn't matter because I thought that's what everyone did. And that's what life looked like. And I didn't even imagine that there could be an alternate reality for what life experience could be like. So I'd say that was like the first obstacle and hurdle. And in terms of um, blaming or feeling upset about our situation, we were really good at feeling really sorry for ourselves. Um, And throughout this journey, even when we started getting momentum, the whole time it's like, damn, I wish we had an easy button. I wish there was a button that I could push. I wish I had a really rich relative somewhere that could make this better for me. And repeatedly the message was just like, 
no one's coming to save us. Yep. No one's going to yeah. fix our situation. <laughs> we cannot rely on anyone else. And I think that mindset is like coming into your own as an adult. At this time, we're in our late 20s. And it's like, mom and dad aren't saving us. The government's not saving us. No one's saving us. So we have to figure it out. And the only way to get through it is like, sheer hard work yeah. and just like pushing through even when it sucks. And so for us, like one of my favorite quotes is like working wins, wishing won't. Yeah. And so we nice. tried to wish away our situation every which way we could. Um, Allie yeah. would sometimes joke and say like, you know, is this just like a prank? Are you actually rich and you're not telling me about it? And I was like, I wish no. <laughs> uh, but right. It was really okay. Um, how do people who have had similar situations, how have they overcome it? Um, and so that's kind of where we went to the internet and we found YouTube and podcasts and books and things like that. Um, and that started kind of normalizing conversations. And suddenly we started kind of getting a roadmap for how we could get out of the situation we were in. Amazing. So can, if we could jump forward to now, where you are now, what you've accomplished and just, just where you are right now, as far as um, finances or in, in your investments, your portfolio. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we started in uh, 2018, we had $102,000, but that was just the student loans. So I also had car loans and credit cards, uh, maybe a personal oh, yeah. loan. Oh yeah. If there was a debt, I was on it. Yeah. We uh, were really good. I think that. you it were, I guess when we met, yeah, they had no business giving me car loans, but anyways, <laughs> I think total, I think we were a little over 120,000. Um, today we have no consumer in debt. debt. Um, yeah, the debt. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. We paid off all of our debt. Um, January of 2022 was our final payment. Um, and then we, today, wow, we own uh, $1.3 million of real estate, including our primary home. So $1.1 million of that is residential small multifamily in upstate New York. Um, we have both left our full-time jobs. And so um, most recently, we've been still working in human services on a, a part-time basis, about 10 hours a week. Um, Allie actually just had her last day yesterday, um, which is really exciting as we plan. I'm plan 35 weeks pregnant, so yeah. I'm, I'm on maternity leave. Oh, so yeah. Not returning. Oh, 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 congratulations. And then, um, I still Your life is about to change. Yeah, <laughs> I, I still do some part time consulting work in uh, career disability employment services, but that's probably going to be coming to an end um, sometime this year. Um, and then so we're not when we're not buying or managing our rentals, um, we're creating content through social media to help people understand how to buy rentals and get better with money. OK, so Rich brought you to now I'm going to take you back to that moment when you had all that debt. <laughs> and you were getting inspired, but also kind of like, well, they did it. How can we do it? I, I imagine a little bit. Of, like, I don't, how are we going to get there? So when you're in debt and have no money, what's the first step? What did you do to with your first application? I think um, you can't understate the importance of getting your finances in order and we got really lucky because we were quite, quite scrappy with how we did it. We skipped our honeymoon. Um, we scraped together every dollar we had and we bought a house hack. So we put down 5% on this house hack. We moved into it and right away we reduced our cost of living in half. Um, but our finances were not incredible when we did that. We just knew we're spending more every month than what we're making and we need to figure out ways to reduce our expenses expenses. Um, I would say for someone getting started, what gets measured gets managed. So you want a really good idea of what does my income look like? What do my expenses look like? What debts do I have? And create an actionable plan for how to improve that. The golden rule, right? In personal finance, you guys know, increase your income, decrease your expenses, take that gap and throw it towards your goals, whether it's debt payoff or investing. And then I would say specifically, especially if, if couples are listening here, um, Allie and I could not have been more opposite when it came to our values, um, especially leading up to getting married. Um, and so before wow. we could even start digging into, you know, budgeting and money management, X, Y, and Z, it was really like, 
what does your ideal life look like? What does the perfect day look like to you? What are the things that you hold to be most important? And we were we were worlds apart at that point. And so beyond just like money management and financial independence, we knew that if we were going to have a healthy, thriving marriage, we had to get way more aligned with that if any of this was going to work. And so we spent a lot of time and energy having those communications, having those conversations so that we could be more aligned. And then once we kind of got there, having conversations and then kind of rowing in the same direction when it comes to money, it wasn't easy, but it got easier. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, uh, just an example, like you said your values were different. Can you give us an example of like how, what values or what was different? For sure. I, uh, I like vividly remember this conversation because I think I was having like an existential crisis. Um, We had talked (laughs) about like our top three values. And my number one was like time with the people that I love. And then like, you know, Mm -hmm. health and travel. And Josh's number one was career. And at the time he was a manager at a non-for-profit and he was working insane hours all the time. It was a point of conflict in our relationship. And I remember thinking, do I want to marry someone that prioritizes their career over our family and relationship? Because I know for me, what I care about most is time with family. And I think there's nothing wrong with prioritizing your career. We prioritize our career together now. But I think if you're kind of having that misalignment between partners, like that can be the challenge. Luckily for us, fate intervened. (laughs) And yeah. Josh got fired from that job. Um, I want to say a few months later. Yeah. Um, and it was one of the best things that ever happened to us. At the time, it felt like Ooh. our world was crashing and burning because our wedding was a few months away. How are we going to survive? Um, but oh, leaving man. that job gave Josh the perspective of, hey, this job that I thought was going to be for my forever place of employment I got a garbage bag on a Friday afternoon and I had to clear my desk really quick. And it kind of put the priority back to like, what's important for me and what do I value? And what did that look like for you then? Very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, up until that point, like I said, Allie Allie and I hadn't really spent a whole lot of time actually together, especially when she was in her master's and we were working different careers. And then all of a sudden I had nothing but time. And so I began, we, we had gotten rid of one of our, actually, no, I had crashed one of our cars, I should say. It was a good month. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly now I'm driving Allie to work and picking her up from work every day. And every morning for that extra 30 minutes, we would just talk and we would talk about what we we're doing and everything like that. And then I would pick her up after school and we would just talk. And it was in those conversations that very quickly I was like, I'm so in love with this person. I don't know exactly how, but like, I would love to have more of these talks and not just before work, but just like every day. Man, that's a perfect example of every curse hides a blessing, right? (laughs) From the job to the car. That's amazing. I love that. You two are so wise beyond your years. Such really wonderful advice. I, I, Rich and I are doing a couples retreat uh, next weekend when we're we're so excited and we're going to implement some of the things that you just said. Actually, we were going to start with vision and aligning. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I kind of coming back to this, yeah, aligning the vision and the values. If you were so far apart, how did you come together? Um, I think being in the human services field too, like I'm a licensed clinical therapist by trade. So I feel like we really just have a habit of nonstop talking Yeah, and uh, mm. we're not that like put walls up um, or are guarded. Like if I'm upset about something, I'll talk about it for five hours until we find compromise. So that's what we did. And like, it wasn't pretty and it wasn't fun. And I think that if a couple is listening and you haven't been in therapy, I think it's the, one of the best things you can do for your relationship. Like being in therapy for us was massive and instrumental and you don't have to be Mm -hmm. in like a bad place to go to therapy. But um, I think just that constant communication Um, of working, like, what do we want our lives to look like? What's working in our relationship and what do we need to improve? Because so often when we think of relationships, it's love, it's romance, it's lust, it's whatever you want to say, but it's a business relationship Mm -hmm. and you're merging people that had two very different upbringings. And now we're trying to form a life together and it's bumpy and it's not easy. And I don't always agree with you. So, um, (laughs) yeah, simply put, 
a ton of communication. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, we have a session today with our relationship coach. We've been married 26 years and we Amazing. still once a month meet with our relationship coach just to facilitate the conversation, make sure everything's being said. Yeah. I, I think the term therapy is where what throws people off. It's really yes. not um, unusual at all for a very high powered business person to have a coach or a consultant. Mm-hmm. But somehow, like you said, your your marriage is a business. You're merging your finances and you're you're running those finances together. And if somebody's not on the same page, I've seen it a lot. I mean, somebody I know very well who opened up a credit card without their spouse knowing and put hundreds of thousands of dollars on it. So that when they went to buy a house, they couldn't, um, you know, that's an example of not in alignment, right? Not communicating. So yeah, to just take away the word therapy, just know that if you want to get better at anything, it's great to have a, a coach. Yeah. Cause uh, a lot of times th- therapy, you know, brings up healing, right? So a lot of times it's like, you're good and you just want to keep it good. So it's more right. of a tune up, really. Yeah. Yeah. And That's I'll awesome. tell you too. So like, so this is, we, we got into like kind of like premarital counseling, if you will. And that was transformative for us. And it was so life changing that now um, we're expecting our, our first child here in a few weeks. And about like maybe December. December or so, we said, well, if the last time we went through a big transition, um, a counselor, a coach, a therapist um, really helped guide us, improve our communication so we could have a more successful outcome, why don't we do it again? And so we found an awesome. amazing person um, who we actually meet with now every other Friday. It's like the best part it's, of the week. It's like, I love a- it. <laughs> absolutely transformative. Yeah, I love um, it. Yeah. Wow. Preparing for oh, just life and communication because just, just like life. preparing okay. for the transition of parenthood. Like, I mean, at this point in our life, Josh and I have designed a life which I imagine is very similar to yours. Like we're together like twenty four seven. We run multiple businesses. We have the Phi Couple. We have our real estate business, and now we're embarking on our newest business venture, raising a human and yeah. making sure she turns out okay. And I think that <laughs> just, you know, um, streamlining communication and getting systems in place, and it's been really incredible. Because I think a lot of times when you develop a a framework, if you will. And that framework, once you own it and you develop it and you live it, you can start applying that to pretty much all facets of your life. And there's certain minutia specific to real estate versus a business versus family, et cetera. But that framework is pretty universal. And so the act of communication, kind of working that muscle daily, um, uh, it just helped us so much. And so, yeah, so now as we're gearing up for parenthood, um, our, our marital life coach person She's um a therapist yeah but it's all good just yeah. does wonders yeah <laughs> yeah perfect yeah i mean therapists and coaches it's like they kind of bridge the gap yeah when I, we went through coach training certification there was so many therapists going through the same certification um uh, yeah just for a, a, the additional skill set yeah. of that Absolutely. i'm really curious about now that you've kind of been in the game for a while here and you've been networking with a lot of people who have created success and financial success. What is it that you guys have noticed about that type of mindset, that type of person? Hmm. The first thing that comes to mind, and I know Josh will add on more to this, but I think that when we were in a position of living paycheck to paycheck and struggle in our career and not making a ton of income, um, I looked at people that were five steps, 10 steps, 100 steps ahead of me that were what I defined as successful. And it was like, wow, they have the secret sauce. Like, I can't do that. Um, What are they doing? They're so smart. They're so talented. They have resources that I don't. But then we did this thing called networking and we started connecting with people that were way smarter and way more successful than us and getting comfortable with being the dumbest person in the room, essentially. Um, And realizing these people are not necessarily smarter than me. They don't know any magic secret. They're just staying consistent and implementing and they have their goals and they keep pushing towards it, even in the face of fear or insecurity or doubt. So I think my biggest takeaway with surrounding ourselves with high achieving people is that anyone can be a high achieving person. It just takes the right mindset and 
commitment to whatever it is that you're working towards. I think, yeah, it's, I think it's incredible focus. Um, I think it was like Steve Jobs had a quote is innovation is saying yes to one thing and no to a thousand things. And so the people that we see that we learn from, they are incredibly focused. And on the outside looking in, you could see a dozen things that those people could do that clearly they would do very, very well with, but it's not in their circle of competence. And they are so relentless with the thing that's in front of them. Um, And then also a lot of them that we connect with and that we learn from, right, so much of it is having an abundance mindset. And it's also not asking how can I uh, have more so how can I get, right? The famous quote, it's like, um, you can have anything in life if you're willing to help enough people. And so nine times out of 10, the people that we learn from and we look up to the most the reason that they've accomplished what they've accomplished is because they've helped 10 times as many people accomplish more. And so that's kind of what our goal is now. I love that. It's like, yeah, something, something I say to myself often is discipline in the short term brings success in the long term. So it fits in exactly what you guys are talking about. Staying yeah. consistent. Yeah. Our friend David Green has a quote like, eat your cereal before the marshmallows. And that has been like, the story of our life since we started this journey. It's like making the short-term sacrifice and being uncomfortable and being okay with that because we understand the bigger picture and we know what we need to do to get there. And I remember, and and now, now it sounds like I'm a genius or something like that, but like <laughs> five years ago when we really started this journey, I was like, you know, it's like, well, if we can live very, very different for the next five years and really focus maybe we could live different for the next 50 years and beyond. And it, and it sounded nice back then, but here we are. And it's literally been like five years. And we, we, we Allie's grandfather always talks about like plan your work, work your plan and just plan your work. And that's been like, we've said that like a trillion times over the last five years. And here we are after five years of hard work and focus. And it's like, we have a chance, yeah, for the next 50 years or however long we have, to live very different than we otherwise would have if we hadn't started. Yeah. What do you see in 20 years? What is the vision? Oh boy. That's when it gets crazy. It's a big one. Yeah. yeah. We were talking to someone the other day and they're like, where is like the craziest place you'd want to travel or mm. like a $25,000 splurge vacation. And we've, lived so long and like frugal disciplined all of that um my brain hasn't like engineered to that phase of life yet and we're intentionally increasing our lifestyle for the first time we've been living on so little and now we're like 3xing it but intentionally um so when i think like 20 years from now man it's like i'd like to continue to have our businesses not be reliant on w2s and just time doing what we want, I think we'll never stop being entrepreneurs, but just finding the next rendition of that, you know? I know for me too. So like not to go deep dive into it, but like I grew up in just severe abuse, severe poverty, um, foster care, things like that. And so the expression, like it takes a village to raise a child. Like I was very blessed to have a village of people that gained nothing from taking me under their collective wings, um, but they raised, helped raise me to be who I am today. And so through the Phi Couple and social media and the work that we do, um, we also have a, a mentorship program where we help hundreds of people. Um, I like to think that 20 years from now, maybe, who knows, maybe we will help, help, have helped hundreds of thousands of people um, gain not just financial independence, right, but also just better character, better quality of life, better awareness about themselves and the relationship with money. Um, if we can lead to better conversations, especially amongst couples, right? I think that the rates around divorce in the United States, especially when it brings in money, are so incredibly high. And if we can play any part in that and help people live a better, higher quality of life, and like that's a huge win. That's really powerful. Well, I want to acknowledge you guys because one thing I've noticed through this whole interview is zero victim, 100% responsibility. (laughs) It's refreshing. It's very refreshing. Yeah. I I swear, after an interview like this, I just feel like I have complete faith in the future. (laughs) I think a lot of it, right, it comes down to perspective. Um, I mean, we both come from families where, I mean, like Allie's grandfather was an entrepreneur 
during the 50s, I think. So like we, we're very fortunate. We have the internet. We can learn so much. Actually, uh, Ali's grandpa, I remember he was he ran like a mechanic shop and he wrote like what we would call today like an ebook. He wrote a little pamphlet on like how to change your oil and he was trying to sell it for like five cents. And like now in today's day and age, like we made a digital ebook online and we're selling it. And it's just it's it's funny to see. It's cute. But um yeah, no, I think that definitely it's, I don't want to understate it. I think that people that meet us now, it's like, wow, look what you've accomplished. This is exciting. And I always have like the asterisk of like, yes, but I want you to know where we started. Um, because I think that's always so important with everyone's story. Um, because for us, like we were like totally out to lunch. We were just not aware of finances, money, um, any of it. And I think that where we were and where we are, um, it just shows that like taking control of your life, like you are the driver, right? I said, no one's coming to save you. And it's just like, we were kind of coasting through our twenties as the passengers of our lives. And to take that more active role and understand that you don't have to be on this conveyor belt. And there's a million different alternatives and opening your mind to that possibility. Um, it just creates so much opportunity and abundance for you. And yeah. there's no magic pill, you know, there's no. no magic pill. A lot of people want that with weight loss or, um, you know, to win the lottery. Unfortunately, when those things happen, the habits haven't changed mm-hmm. and you kind of go back on where you are. Yeah. It's the discipline and the structure and the plan and following the plan and the step-by-step that really makes that, that lifelong change and, and keeps you in the direction of where you really want to go. I love it. I love it. You guys are very, really so inspirational. Yeah, I want to get your address after this show because I'm going to send you a copy of The Wise Investor because you guys are going to be, they're going to be reading The Wise Investor, like <laughs> nodding. It's so in alignment. Yeah. It's kind of, oh, it's, it's kind of your story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, all right. Well, Ali and Josh, thank you so much for joining us here on The Real Wealth Show. You've been a real inspiration to us and I'm sure to our listeners. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's been a pleasure. Absolute honor. Yeah, and thank you guys both for the work that you do. Mm. Thank you. Of it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real Wealth Show. I, I was really inspired by this interview. Oh, man. Just amazing. Just so inspiring. I love that. The young people making it happen. And man, the way they just take responsibility and look at a new wealth mindset is awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for joining us here on The Real Wealth Show. Look forward to seeing you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.